Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I'm so excited today to come to you with something that is a little, maybe not as normal for me. <laughs> I have been the self-proclaimed queen of the backlist for a long time. Most of the books in this room, well, all of the books in this room are backlist titles. I, I receive very few books to review that are current, that are within the current year. Um, I do try to get some from the library, but every year I start to see other people talking about anticipated releases and it gets me really excited for books that are coming up. So that's what we're going to do today. I am hopefully going to do this four times in the course of 2021 and talk about anticipated releases that are coming up for the next few months. So today I'm only going to talk about books coming out in January, February, and March. One of them which came out right at the end of December. And I will just tell you a tiny bit about them. They're brand new, so I don't know too much about them. I'll tell you why they are on my radar. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is The Mystery of Mrs. Christie. This is a book by Marie Benedict. It came out on December 29th. I do have it put on hold at the library already. So as soon as it comes in, I will be able to read it. And this is a mystery book. In 1920, Agatha Christie went missing for 11 days. And this book explores the possibility of what could have happened to her. Nobody knows where she went, what happened to her during that time. So this one is Marie Benedict imagining what happened to Agatha Christie. I don't really know much more than that, but I love the idea of a kind of a backstory on Agatha Christie, a little bit biographical about her life, but also this 11 day missing period, what could have happened? I just think that that sounds really fun. And Marie Benedict is an author that I have two other books of hers on my shelf. She's an author that I'm intrigued by, I'm interested in. So maybe this one will be the first if it comes in from the library. The next book is You Have a Match by Emma Lord. This one comes out on January 5th. So tomorrow, <laughs> the day that I'm filming this, it's coming out tomorrow. This one I also have on hold at the library. This is going to be a YA. Emma Lord wrote Tweet Cute, which I read last year and really enjoyed a sweet uh, kind of YA contemporary romance. And this one feels like it's going to be the same. However, some things about this one that really made it stand out to me, it's going to take place at a summer camp. Uh, one of the main characters, I think she was adopted or something. For some reason, she does a DNA, one of those DNA twists like through Ancestry.com or through 23andMe. And she learns that she has this sister who she then meets at this summer camp. What? That sounds so cool. And I'm sure there's going to be a level of romance in there as well. But that in itself, like learning that you have an unknown sister and then meeting that sister at a summer camp, like I get kind of vibes of the parent trap in that. So I'm, I'm really excited about that one. Then we have another historical fiction by Melanie Benjamin called The Children's Blizzard. Oh, and I should say all the dates of these could change. Last I checked, um, these are the dates they're going to be published. So I don't know if any of them have changed. I should have checked today before I started this, but I didn't. So this one, The Children's Blizzard, comes out on January 12th, so next week. And I also have this one on hold at the library already. Yay. This book takes place in 1888. And during that year, there was a huge blizzard that hit. And it kind of snuck up on everybody. So in this story, we follow this group of children who were who who were just about to leave school or just leaving school when the blizzard hits. Some of them are able to continue on to make it home. Some of them don't. Some of them turn around and head back to the schoolhouse. And this happened across the prairies. And the, this happens in the prairies in U.S., like Kansas and out in like the flatlands. And so it just kind of snuck up and hit really hard. And so it wasn't just one school that this happened to, but across the prairies, I guess this happened. And so we we learn about the school teachers who had to try to help these students survive, not knowing how long this, this blizzard was going to last. I don't know how long it lasted. I don't know much about it. I had never heard of it before. But I'm so intrigued by this idea of, of school teachers trying to help their students survive. And I mean, they have probably wood stoves in their schoolhouses and students may have brought a lunch with them. But if it's the end of the day, did they already eat their lunches? I don't know. How are they going to survive? What is going to happen? And this is the actual story of people who did survive. So it's based on true stories. So yes, please. That sounds so good. So good. The next three all come out on February 2nd. So it's a good day for, for my my world of books I'm anticipating. The next one is The Paris Library by Janet Skelsian Charles. And this one, like I said, comes out on February 2nd. And I do have it on hold at the library. 
And this one is a dual timeline World War II story um, where the focus is this library in Paris and where a group of librarians joins the resistance. And that in itself, I'm down with that. Librarians joining the resistance during World War II. Sounds so good. But we also have a second storyline takes place in 1983 in Montana, um, where a lonely teenager kind of bonds with her elderly neighbor. And I'm assuming this elderly neighbor either was one of those librarians or has ties to those librarians in some way. And they both have secrets. This teenager and this elderly woman have secrets that tie them together. And I'm sure those secrets are going to come out during the course of the book. But that has World War II, dual timelines, librarians, kind of joining the resistance, teenager, an elderly person um, relationship. And I just love that so much. So yeah, that one just sounds so good to me. Oh, the next one is an author that is, is a newer favorite for me, which is Susan Meisner. I love her. And you guys, if you watched my goals video, I'm hoping to read all of the books I currently own by Susan Meisner. She's a pretty prolific author, so there are more, but I want to at least read the ones that I own. But I also have this one on hold at the library. This is her new book called The Nature of Fragile Things, and it comes out on February 2nd. And this one, this one takes place in 1906 in San Francisco, where that's the year that there was the fire and an earthquake or an earthquake first that kind of sparked this fire. And we follow the lives of three different women whose lives intertwine. There's a mail order bride who came from New York. There's a pregnant single young woman and a third woman who's grieving in the Southwest. So farther south from San Francisco. So I'm not sure how their stories are all going to interconnect, but I love, I love this. I don't think I've read anything that takes place during the San Francisco fire and earthquake. Um, and I love stories of strong women. And so the, the fact that these three women's lives are going to interconnect and I love Susan Meisner. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty trusting of the work that she's going to do. So I'm very excited about the nature of fragile things. Another favorite author of mine is Kristen Hanna, and she has a book coming out in February as well called The Four Winds, which I also have on hold at the library. This one, The Four Winds, takes place in during the Great Depression in the Dust Bowl in our Midwest. Elsa is our main character, and she's kind of left running her family farm, and she has to decide if she's going to try to stay and keep the farm afloat, or if she's going to pack it up and move out west and try to start a new life. So I don't know what she's going to decide. I don't know. But I read Out of the Dust is a Newbery winner um, middle grade book that takes place during this Dust Bowl time period. And it was so moving. And I don't know that I've read any adult books that take place during this time. I've read books that take place in the Depression, but not specifically the Dust Bowl. So I'm really, I'm really eager to read this one by Kristen Hanna. And I'm almost positive it's going to make me cry. <laughs> Let's be honest, it doesn't take much. A kind of a different one that I discovered as I was looking up newer releases is called The Lost Apothecary. This one is by Sarah Penner. It comes out in March 2nd. So now we're into the March books. I do have this one on hold and I think this is the last one that was available to put on hold already at the library. So who knows when I'll get them. I'm hoping I'm pretty early on the holds list for all of these. We shall see. But this is the last one I already have on hold for the library. Okay, this one is pretty cool. It, it does have a tool timeline. Dual. It does have a dual timeline. It takes place in London in 1791 and we follow this female apothecary who makes poisons to give to women who need to get rid of their husbands or the men in their lives. Maybe they've been abused or hurt or injured or something and they're trying to escape the men in their life. And so this apothecary, this female apothecary, makes these poisons to allow these women to escape. Then there's a more present day storyline where somebody finds one of these vials. And I guess this case had never, like she had never been arrested or, or discovered doing this, I guess. But, but it was, but it was known that somebody was making these poisons for these women to kill their husbands or kill the men in their lives. I don't know if it's all husbands, but, um, so in present day London, a woman finds one of these vials. And I don't know if this woman is also trying to escape a horrible situation or not, but it just sounded very intriguing to me. I love the idea of a female apothecary and her kind of helping women in such an awful way. I don't know if there's anything about this that's based on reality or in like true events. So I'd have to look that up, but it just sounded really cool. And I think the cover of it is really pretty. Another author that I have read before, and I've read two of her books now and really enjoyed both of them. Uh, and that is The Rose Code, The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. And this one comes out on March 9th. I don't have this one on hold yet. In this one, we follow three female code breakers during World War II 
who are super close during the war. They work together. They, I don't know if they even live together, but something happens, some kind of betrayal happens that separates them. So they go their different ways towards the end of the war. And one of them is even sent to an asylum. I don't know. I don't know what happens there. But years later, circumstances are going to bring these three women back together. I feel like Kate Quinn is going to do a really good job with this story. It sounds so interesting and intriguing. And I I'm here for it. I'm here for you, Kate Quinn. Let's read it. This next book is totally on a different playing field. Like it's a much lighter, kind of maybe fluffier book. Maybe it's called The Little French Bridal Shop. And this one is by Jennifer Dupree. I don't know if I've read anything by Jennifer Dupree. This one comes out on March 9th as well. And this is a debut. So no, I haven't read anything by De Jennifer Dupree because this one is a debut. This one sounds kind of fun. Because there's a part of me that can kind of see this happening to someone who's in my shoes, being older and single. I don't know how old our protagonist is going to be. But in this book, this woman goes to this bridal shop. I'm not even sure why, but she's in a town in Massachusetts. She goes to this bridal shop and tries on a gown and then gets swept up in this fantasy and starts planning her own wedding. The problem is there's no groom. <laughs> she just, she starts looking at flowers and catering and cakes and any, and all of these things. And also, um, she has a mom who's not well and is pretty sick. And she just really needs to learn to open up about stuff. And she has things in her own life that she needs to change and get ready for before she's ready for a healthy relationship, but are ready for love, as it would say. But I just think that that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I feel like it might be a character that I can relate to on some level. <laughs> Um, the next one is a nonfiction by Lisa Genova, who I have read a couple books by and really love. And I've talked about it before. Lisa Genova is an author who is a neuroscientist. And when she writes, she writes about, about main characters who have some kind of brain injury or trauma or disease. So like Alzheimer's or Lou Gehrig's or has been in a coma, or, um, amnesia or different things like that. So she is really, really good about getting inside the heads of these people who experience these types of diseases and traumas. And so her book that's coming out in March on the 23rd is called Remember the Science of Memory and the Art of Forgetting. And so this book is just going to take a look at memory, how memories are made, how we can retrieve them and like work to increase our memory ability. I think I am just really intrigued to read a nonfiction by Lisa Genova. I, I don't know how the writing style will be. I know I really, really love her non her fiction books. So I'm hoping that her nonfiction is just as compelling. And the last one that I'm going to talk about today comes out on March 30th, right at the end of the month. And it's called The Sunflower Sisters by Martha Hall Kelly. This is the author of The Lilac Girls and The Lost Roses. Sunflower Sisters is connected to the story in The Lost Girls and or Lilac Girls and Lost Roses. Caroline Faraday, who's one of the characters in the Lilac Girls, and we're going to follow one of her ancestors, who was a nurse in the Union Army in the, during the Civil War, and as well as another character named Gemma, who was enslaved on a Maryland plantation, has the chance to run, but it has to decide if she's going to leave her family. And then a third girl, a third woman that we follow is called Anne May, and she's the woman who runs the plantation where Gemma is enslaved. And her husband goes to leave, leaves to go fight for the South. And so we'll follow the story of these three women. That seems to be a trope that I like, because I think this is the third book on this list that involves three women. But Anne May has to just, um, has to now run the plantation on her own. And I guess she's a pretty hard and coarse character. And I like that in Lilac Girls. I still haven't read Lost Roses, but in Lilac Girls, um, Martha Hall Kelly talks about three women as well. And one of them is is not a likable character and is a Nazi doctor working on these terrible experiments on um, prisoners in the concentration camp. So I like that she, she ties together stories of three women, but they're not always three like women that we're going to look, that we're going to look up to and, and emu want to emulate in any way. Um, but we kind of get to know their stories as well. So I have a feeling this plantation owner, Anne May is not going to be a character that I'm going to love, but it will be interesting to see what she does with that story. So there are 11 books that I'm super, super excited about that are coming out in the next three months. I'm hoping sometime towards the end of February and March, I will 
I will start looking at what's coming out in April, May, and June because I like getting them on hold at my library early if I can. Uh, and I will try to request some of them if I'm able to. I don't know. We'll see. I know many of them are on NetGalley, but I was too late to start requesting these ones. I The ones that I did, I got declined for because I think they're it's too soon to their publishing date. So maybe I need to start looking now for April, May, and June. It's okay. I need to get that NetGalley score up first. We'll talk about that in another, in another video. But yeah, these are 11 books that I'm super excited for. I just think that they sound so good. Some of my favorite authors are coming out with new books. I don't normally keep such a close eye on books coming out because I have so many books that I need to read that are here. But it will be fun to kind of have, have a handful throughout the year that, that I have my eye on. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to read all 11 of these. I'm, I'm going to try though. At least the ones that I'm able to get from my library. So we shall see, but I just wanted to share what I'm excited about. I would love to hear if there's a book coming out that you are excited about in the next couple months. And let's chat about upcoming releases down in the comments below. This is a different thing for my channel. So I hope that you have fun with it. And I hope that you chat with me down in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that you're here and I will talk to you in another video very soon. Bye. Thank you.